So with the dust blown off, we're ready to build a finish. So first we'll apply shellac and about a tablespoon. Notice I'm just using a quarter sheet of a paper towel folded up. Uh, this conserves the shellac and keeps towel from uh, dragging where you don't want it. Uh, uh, the wood will really soak the shellac in. This pr first coat is uh, quite easy and will take quite a lot of shellac uh, relative to the others. Uh, you want to inspect what you put on. Look for heavy spots and just wipe them out. As long as your, um, your towel is wet, it won't stick to the shellac. But once the towel becomes dry, it would stick, and um, that's more of a problem on later coats. So here we are doing the sides. Uh, I'm starting on the back on this, but because uh, we used to have our seam on the back, but I actually suggest you start on the front where the seam is there. Uh, work your way down. And around. So about roughly three tablespoons, I think, is what it took. Uh, inspect, look for heavy spots, wipe them out now. Look for drips that might have dripped onto the back. Those are much easier to catch now than fix later. Okay, the, for the, the top's the trickiest. We start with the bridge. And we're applying shellac. Um, you can see a little bit heavy there, so if it's heavy, just wipe it out. Now I wipe, now I do the back of the bridge and I work it in, and then I do the region from the bridge to the tail. Uh, the reason for this strategy is that once the shellac dries a certain amount, you can't really go back to it uh, without uh, it grabbing the, the towel because it's too tacky. So uh, I try to work in such that I, I'm always working near something I did recently, and that kind of a pattern uh, achieves that. Inspect carefully, wipe up anything or, or touch up anything you don't like. As usual, let that dry one hour. Okay, now we're uh, inspecting for roughness. You'll see notice quite a lot. Uh, we're scuff sanding uh, about the weight of your hand or less. You can do lots of light passes or some heavy passes. I usually do lots of light passes. Uh, that's that's a worn piece of 220, which is my what I typically use for the first couple of uh, coats. Okay, this is a little trickier working on the bridge. Uh, I have some footage and later coats showing how to do that better. Uh, you can see we're we're trying to get the sample right up against the bridge and then pull away. You notice all of the movements are with the grain. That way, if there is a scratch produced by the sandpaper, it's not that noticeable because it's with the grain. So try to work that way, and you'll save yourself some rework later. Uh, inspect and keep on. Um, this took quite a while. The first coat will produce a lot of roughness, so inspect a lot and keep fixing the roughness until you're happy with it. It won't get better with the second. Okay, the second coat of shellac. We'll go on pretty similar to the first, but the wood won't suck it, soak it up quite as much, so you need to be a little more cautious about runs and drips. Particularly in this area, there's a danger that the shellac will become gloppy, particularly around the bridge area, if you use too much. So um, you want to use just the right amount, of course. Let dry an hour. Uh, scuff sand, as usual, 220. We're upping the grit size as we add coats. Uh, now we're re applying the uh, water-based lacquer, uh, and the technique I find works for this. You can actually show in there. You can pour it right on if you want. Uh, just make sure it, you wipe it quickly. I work it in in a circular motion, and then I wipe it in a longitudinal motion so that all of the brush lines are with the grain, and then inspect it. See it. Look for anything that's irregular. There I did find a little drip that went over to the side. Okay, let dry 30 minutes, scuff sand a higher grit size, apply a second coat, let dry 30 minutes. And this is our last uh, scuff sanding. This is 800 grit. Uh, after this, the finish is done, so you want to be uh, particularly careful with this one. You can see there the technique to work around the bridge. You want to get pressure right up against the bridge and then also sand with the grain.
and this technique does that. When you're working on the bridge, be very careful. It's very easy to take off finish off of the corners. And with that, you should have a nicely finished guitar.